Ladies and gentlemen, there is a new AI in the world, and it is completely and totally unhinged. Now, normally when you hear a sentence like that, you think society is doomed to fail. We might be, but not yet. We probably still got about at least 10 or 20 years. I'm speaking about a chess AI, a chess AI that has taken the world by storm, and its name is Torch. Torch was introduced last year by Chess.com, and I've made several videos about it where it beats a lot of strong bots, loses to them, but the thing is it always provides a fascinating fight. And in today's video, I'm going to show you several games that will stimulate several emotions inside of you that may or may not be confusing. They might be anger, they might be fascination, they might be nausea. They might be excitement and jubilation and laughter because you and I will never understand chess at this level. And as a bonus, the last game of this video is a fascinatingly, ridiculously idiotic, stupid game, which is normally what would describe our chess games. It was a 200 move game between Torch and Stockfish. So you will watch it like, I don't know, like a seventh wonder of the world. And I'm gonna break these games down for you. Uh, this game with Stockfish was one of the longest I've ever seen, 202 moves. But this game, the first one, oh my goodness. Now, a friendly reminder, when these bots play each other, they use an opening book. So they play pre-programmed moves until a point against each other. Their ratings are estimated here. Uh, Torch begins with D4, none of that matters. We have a modern defense, an opening that many, many strong grandmasters use, uh, including Hikaru Nakamura. White develops like this. White plays F3 to prevent knight to G4 or bishop G4. And then white will frequently put a queen here and use these pawns to attack black. Now, the players played a lot of that stuff. Black instigated on the queen side. This was actually uh, the final moment of the, uh, of the opening. Like, knight h3, bishop b7. So, now they're on their own. Which is fascinating because normally these bots are given massive advantages against each other. So they were on their own. And as you can see, Leela played h5 to stop Torch's attack, right? And Torch can now castle. I think many humans here would make a preparatory move. Torch lunges forward immediately. It's, it hasn't even castled. So I guess its idea, which is its hybrid style, you know, it was to trade the queens. That was actually its idea. And then probably to sacrifice this pawn to make black have two weaknesses. Torch is a fascinating mix of ridiculous uh, aggressive play, but also positional play. Now, Leela strikes back against the knight and then puts its side in the center. And now Torch gives up that pawn completely to try to open up Leela's position. Leela says, no thank you. Instead, I'm going to play the move F5. I'll leave this pawn here for the future. Maybe I'll capture it. And now good luck attacking me. Torch says, okay, terrific. I'm gonna take advantage of the weakened uh, G5 square. And now I'm gonna get as many pawns in the board as possible. I'm gonna ignore this attack on the knight completely. Take my knight. I don't care. If you take my knight, my idea is that your pieces will get stuck and then I'm gonna go get the C file. And that's gonna be a massive problem for you, which I created with my pawn sacrifice that you did not accept. So, Leela goes back with the knight and Torch here, with its knight hanging on the edge of the board and the opportunity to protect it, doesn't want black to have time to consolidate and sacrifices its knight completely. Queen takes a4, 100% free knight. No questions asked. The only questions that are getting asked are the fact that what are gonna happen in the black position if you allow uh, white to start brutalizing your position? The craziest part is, Torch doesn't even take. It brings another piece. It doesn't even capture, and it's sacrificing another pawn. It's basically saying that despite being a full knight down, black's position is standing around like a Tetris piece. Black has absolutely no forward mobility, and the queen can't even get back to help. Leela plays b3, now Torch does in fact take on g6, it loses this, but that is an opening of the e-file, now queen e2, and if the knight moves, it's mate. Because both pieces see e7, so queen e7 is literally mate. Leela plays to defend, and now Torch can grab the rook and have uh, a rook and some pawns for a piece. It doesn't. Torch keeps going forward with d5. Cd5, bishop f5, look at the attack, but now the black queen gets back to defend, and black is still up three points of material. Notice, what you're gonna notice in this game is how many pieces see each other and completely ignore each other. Watch this, rook d1. What? Look at my stockfish, it doesn't even understand that move. Rook to d1, abandoning this pawn and just allowing it to stand a square before queening. 
But now white gets an extra piece into the attack, gives up the knight for the rook with check, bishop h8, and now how do you activate the queen without moving it? I'm speaking in riddles, f4, bringing the queen in. Like this. Now look at this move. Knight takes f4. You can take my queen, but then I'm going to get yours. And if you take my knight, I'm going to get this. But the only move, queen c2. Defending the bishop, maintaining an attack on the queen, and the knight is still hanging. Queen c7. And now, instead of taking the knight, which is also free, torch castles. Why does it castle? Because it wants its knight... Uh, it wants its king to safety and the rook to pressure the knight which gets to the king. It's all about getting maximum resources into the attack. Queen b6 check. The king slides out of the way. The queen takes on b2. You can take. Black is going to make a second queen. Now, bishop g6. Preventing the back rank escape. The knight is pinned. The king goes to the corner. Now we hunt the king out of the corner into a check. And now begins a circus level king hunt. King e8. Queen g6 check. King to d7. And now, how do you get to the king? And black is about to make a queen. What are you doing? Bishop e7! And you can't make the queen because queen d6 leads to mate. Wait, but what if you take the bishop? What if you take... Well, then you walk into a ladder. Oh my god. Bishop e7. Lila defending itself with bishop e5. Rook f7. Look at the king walking out. Now you're trying to sack your queen to make a queen with a check and mate. Queen d4. So the rook comes back to protect the rook and the promotion. Oh my god. This is one of the most insane games I've ever seen between two bots. It didn't even take the queen. It's just letting the queen sit there. Now it takes. Bishop d5. Bishop d6. Every piece ignoring every other piece. What is going on? Bishop d6, and when it's all said and done, the black king gets hunted out to the b-file where it is brutally checkmated. Brutally, and black never even played with the rook in the knight. Black basically gave torch eight points of odds because it never used the rook in the knight. It finally uses them, but there's mate on the board. King c5, you take the queen, and now is just the part where you know the pieces lose all the, the one side loses all the pieces. And look at this rook a3 mate with the bishop in the corner. I mean, you talk about piece utilization. What the <laughs> what even was that? This was deranged. This was a, an insane attack. It literally just gave up a whole night because it understood mechanically black can't survive. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like, th this, this, this is unbelievable. Now, I've got another game against Leela. Then I will show you Stockfish. Here's a little mini game against Ethereal, which is slightly weaker than Torch. So I put it at 3580. Uh, this one was an E4, E5. It, it was a weird one because it was like D4 and then Knight F3. I mean, you, you, you can just play knight f3, but again, they're, they're just using an opening book. Essentially, the, the position that they got is a Philidor defense with queen d4. It's basically e4, e5, knight f3, d6, which is fine, but it's a bit passive. And then now you don't take with the knight, but you take with the queen. You don't worry about knight c6 because you can move your queen, but you can also pin the knight and get faster development. Anyway, none of that matters. What does matter is the first move that they made. Uh, by the way, both queens were hanging. That's why white didn't take. Queen d2. It should be seven, knight c3. This is the first position out of book. So both players, both sides have made eight moves. Torch, ethereal. All right, this one doesn't look, you know, that fascinating. Well, torch goes knight h2. Undeveloping its knight to push the bishop out of its position. And now it's able to castle. Now it brings its bishop back. And before black has a chance to get settled, torch just steps on the gas. F4 g6 prevents f5 so f5 and e5 are stopped h5 is not possible and neither is g4 because black controls it three different times so in this position to prepare g4 torch plays g4 yeah because the pawn investment will make black waste time and it will cause black to open up white's position you have to take if you don't take i play f5 you just lose your bishop so now black has to invest time just like you saw in the other game right it's understanding of wasting time Take, take, and now a human here with the attack on the rook looks forward and says, you know what, there is really nothing there for me. Uh, and I don't really want to trade, so maybe I play rook e1 and then I continue an attack. Or I play bishop e2, take, queen e2, and whichever way black castles, then the attack will continue. No, no. Torch says, knight d5, let's go. I mean, Torch literally plays like it's 500. Because if I, if I gave this position to like 50 people rated 500... I don't know, 25% of them might not even see this attack. 
They might go like here, because me, me C rook, me attack rook. Bishop d4 is not a good move. It's not a losing move, but it's not, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not a good move. Knight to d5, and it just straight up gives away the rook. There is no benefit yet. No clear benefit. I, I don't get it. Well, the idea, just like in this game, it understands what pieces are going to get into the game. By stripping your opponent of a key bishop, the relative value of that bishop was about four points for this position. Now, this bishop's value is going to be four points. You can hardly argue that having an extra rook in this position is beneficial. That is the fascinating thing about these, these, these algorithms. Queen d8 is a crazy move, but the point is not to get hit with this. So it goes here, and immediately Torch takes over. So now Torch has five active pieces, right, which are powerful. It plays h5 and c3. c3 blocks the bishop and blunts the knight's access to the position. Bishop h8, and now Torch just marches forward because Torch is playing against four pieces. It's got five on four, all right, just like in hockey. Five on four is a good power. You know, it's a good opportunity to score a goal. Power play, rook g6, queen h5. This rook's presence is not felt at all, and it, and it won't be felt. Knight e7, another piece joins the party. Five pieces pressuring for Torch. Knight d5, queen d5. Suddenly, black is getting mated. Queen d7, queen b7. Now the rook moves, but it's out of desperation. f5, rook g3. Beautiful move. You can't take my bishop because bishop b5. Black's pieces are hardly... They're, they're, they're just standing around. They're table decorations. They're not participating. King e7, bishop f2. Now ethereal begs for mercy. It would love this move. It would love if white just simply took the rook. Any human being there goes for the rook. Then puts the bishop back, plays rook h7, and tries to go for mate. But that's not winning. And Torch knows that, so it doesn't do it. It doesn't play bishop h4. It, it just, it, it con it's the continuous threat of something about to happen. Rook g4, not only does it not play bishop to h4 in this position, after sacrificing its rook earlier in the game to the very straightforward bishop takes d1, 20 moves later, Torch sacrifices the second rook. It's going to play bishops versus rooks, and the attack is simply too strong. The game plan now is push this pawn because black has no way to create counterplay. The bishops cover everything, and they threaten mate. So now it has to lose material back. Rook d4, it gives up for this bishop, and now... The most simple of transitions to a winning position, queen d6, queen c5, the threat is bishop to b5 check, you have to trade queens, this is simple. The pawn joins the others, right, because you could have taken bc, but the pawn joins the others, these three pawns, the bishop, the game is over. This pawn is not even important, it obviously stops f-file stuff, but white's game plan now is push these pawns, bring the king, put the bishop there, and win the game. It transitions out of these monstrous attacks into just the cleanest conversion. Bishop d3, and the idea is to, again, push the bishop backwards, put the king backwards, and it's just going to push. It's going to push its most powerful pawn, which is, of course, the outside pass pawn, pushes it to a6. Black's rook is now completely stuck, and uh, the king walks up the board, the bishop walks up the board, the king walks up the board, and uh, that's it. The game is over. You're going to make a couple queens here, and that's going to be a nice little mate in the corner. This game was absurd. I mean, it, it straight up just took an opening that was relatively balanced and straightforward. It gave up a pawn, it gave up a rook, and it won the game from here. I mean, it, it just, it lost three points of material, and it was like Rock Lee dropping the weights. And it was like, I feel a little bit lighter without that. And it, it just, it's just incredible how it understands relative piece value and how there's just nothing the other side can do. Just a fully controlled demolition. I got two more games for you. This one, Bananas. The next one, mind-blowing. 200 moves against Stockfish. E4, C5. This was a Taiman of Sicilian against Leela, Knight T4. By the way, sometimes y'all ask, like, why do these bots play so many games with white? It's because they rarely lose with, uh, when they have white. So, like, it's very rare for black to win. So it, it, it's much more common. Like, 95% of the time, these bots beat each other with white. Uh, just the nature of chess. A6, knight takes, b takes, this has been played many times before. E5 is not the most common move, but the idea is to secure some control. Queen c7, queen e2, and now black has many moves here. Black can play knight e7, knight g6, knight e7, knight d5, as well as c5 to open the diagonal. The first move out of theory is this move, f5. Uh, f5 is a very committal decision. It's trying to kind of take control of some light squares in the position. Not this one, that's not how pawns work, but I'm just sort of saying the light squares. 
Um, no, black can play a little bit more combative, but f5. Okay, white has control of dark squares. Bishop d2, c5, long castle. So in this game, Torch prioritizes castling over everything else because it's kind of hard to sacrifice material. Like if you play knight d5, there is, that's not a sacrifice, you're just a moron. Which I understand for many of you is very difficult to know the difference. It's very difficult to understand. Like I show you these games, these, these bots are losing all these pieces. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go in my games and lose pieces. Nope, then, then you're just a moron. And then, you know, the, the bot is genius, right? Rook g1, uh, unpinning. And also you're gonna try to target that pawn. Very natural attacking idea. Why, uh, Black plays h5, right? So Leela stops g4, Torch tries to re-enable it. Typical stuff that you understand. Black plays knight e7, Torch doesn't wait. It's gotta go for an attack right now. Now, according to Stockfish, the position is still in the balance. Fg, hg, and now you would think, what kind of a deranged person plays like this? What about h4? Because now Black just straight up marches to the end and is escorted by the bishop. Like, a lot of humans here would go here. As you can see, knight c6, f4, you would lose a good amount of your advantage because black would get very active and you're playing defense. Torch doesn't play def- it doesn't understand what defense is, okay? h4, it just goes bishop g2 to trade the bishop. It completely does not care about the h-pawn. says you can push the h-pawn as much as you want. Now I go here. I activate my rook and I stop you from castling. Very important. Rook b8, f4. So now I'm going for an attack. Right, I'm utilizing all of my resources. Bishop e7 trying to trade. That's a very good trade for white because after bishop e7, you relinquish the control, but d6 is up for grabs. So something will go to d6 very, very soon and you will continue with this attack f5. And Torch just loves opening the position. You bet it's gonna play e6 at some point too. It's gonna get the queen in, get the pawn in. It's gonna play something like that. f5, black castles. The next move by Torch is a gangster move. Uh, no human being here on the planet would play this move. Not a single one. It's the, the move here that Torch plays, it, it's so... Like again, as a human, I look at this and I think F6, you know, to open up the king. That's what I'm thinking, I'm playing, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh, Rook H1 to try to get the H pawn, right? Torch plays Bishop H1. I guess it basically said, the position is wonderful. Now if you take me, I immediately go to the h-file. And also, if you take me here, I open up and my rook is targeting your king, which my bishop was blocking. I mean, bishop h1 is it's just bananas. Completely, you know. And then, like I said, it's going to put a rook on d6. And now black's in trouble. Now black's in a lot of trouble because everything is under pressure. This pawn is definitely not an asset. Knight d8, queen e1, and just... Just watch this. Just there's, There it is. There's the, there's the sacrifice of the material right? The true and tried. And now, instead of e7 attacking the rook or taking the knight, Torch plays this, leaving the knight to die entirely. Why? Because after bishop takes, bishop takes, the threat after you take is this, and then I get to your king. If you go to the h-file, I mate you. So you have to give up your material. Oh my god. Rook f4, trying to get the king to escape. Pawn takes here, here, and Torch is just down a rook. It's down a rook. There's nothing to even show for it. It can't make a queen. What is it doing? Yeah. Well, as it turns out, actually Stockfish here, instead of queen h4 right away, wants e6, king e7, queen h4 check, rook f6. If white plays g5, white actually loses its advantage. But instead of that, queen g5, Rook g8 to defend, rook f1. It's actually very hard for black to make a move. Black can't move. Black has to go queen b8 guarding the rook. Like, look at this position. <laughs> look at this. Nothing can move. Nothing. You play knight b7, I take, and then your queen stops guarding the rook. It's just, instead of that, Torch does it this way, and this is just as good. Torch is down a full rook, but watch as it carves up black's position. Queen e8! Utilizing the pawn, you, you can't take my queen. You have to go here, now I dance. You can't go to the h-file because I mate you. Rook d1, you have to go here, and now I just march my pawn up the board. Queen g6, queen e4. This game never, ever, ever slows down for black. Black is under a merciless attack, and the king is hunted into the center, despite being a full rook down. c4. And geometrically, white is still winning. White has checks from the lateral forever. 
from the diagonal forever and the black king will never find shelter, ever. King c4, queen e6, and when it's all said and done, I win the rook back and I just win. Oh my God. I mean, you, what about king d4, queen h4? The closer you walk into the position, I play queen h3, king c4, and then I would take. The queen cannot protect two rooks at the same time. What? What are we even looking at? King c4, I win the rooks back, and that's it. I win, I mean, one of them. And now queen d3, queen a3, rook h6, queen a5, queen a4, rook d6. You have to lose your queen. You gotta lose your queen. You gotta lose somebody. Rook c6, queen e6, queen g8, it's all threatened. Rook b6. And I just push. I just completely ignore you. I just push. We can trade. There's nothing you can do. d7, queen e6. I stop the only check you have, and I threaten queen e8. I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Like, it was... Torch was straight up down a full rook in this position. And yet, it was still winning. It, it couldn't even promote. And it was still winning. Because these pawns were too powerful, and the king was too weak. It managed to carve its way in, and completely paralyze the black position. Uh, it's just... I mean... I... <laughs> and, then, and, and then it won. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it did what it promoted, and then I... And, and, and by the way, we're 21 minutes into this thing, and I told you at the very beginning, I'm going to show you this Stockfish game. This thing is going to completely blow your mind. I, 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 I had to... I learned a few things from, from, from this game. So, Torch Stockfish, okay, starts out with an English... Okay, Stockfish plays a e6, a6, queen c6, it plays a weird setup. Um, and the players leave, leave the opening very early. They leave the opening here. And then in this position, Torch sacrifices the bishop. It gives away the bishop because it's trying to deflect the queen from the bishop. The alternative to that is after this, Torch plays this move. And now is forking these two pieces... So it's going to win a queen. And if it doesn't win a queen, it's going to win back two full pieces. So the idea is either be up a lot of material, or black needs to give up the queen. And that's exactly what Stockfish does. Stockfish takes, takes this, and when the dust settles, it has a knight, a knight, and a bishop for a queen. Now white is up two pawns. So it's queen and two pawns, which is 11, versus knight, knight, bishop. Now clearly when they made it this far from the opening, they had a feeling that that was going to happen, right? That was, the, that was the idea. It was like, how do the bots play queen versus three pieces? So this is a masterclass in how a queen can beat multiple piece imbalances. You need pass pawns. Because if you have a pawn imbalance with the queen, you will create pass pawns. The opponent will have to sacrifice for them. They, they just can't stop the pawns. Okay, that's number one. Number two is, you have to hunt weaknesses. So your opponent cannot have a bulletproof structure. The queen needs to break through something. So watch as Torch spends the entire game poking at those pawns. That is order of business number one. All right, and you don't want to trade too quickly. We're only in the 20th move. There we go. So phase one is isolate these pawns. Now the pawns start going. Now, instead of opening the position for the opponent, Torch completely gives away a pawn. But, this is incredible, at the cost of a pawn, it prevents the opening of two pieces. See, the alternative was that two pieces open. And not only that, you split black structure. So you isolate two potential future weaknesses, whereas originally the structure was rock solid. All for the cost of a pawn. Now, I told you the pawns are going to go. There's no way for Stockfish to defend, so Stockfish is going for this. It gives up the bishop for two pawns. So... Torch gets its advantage, and now the position is knight, knight, pawn for a queen. Torch is still up two points. However, there are very high drawing chances. Why? There are no more pass pawns. Getting mated is going to be very difficult for black, and the more pawns you trade, the less chance you have of winning. So all the simplifications lead to a draw. Knight g6, rook a7. Now, the bots trade. Every pawn in black's position is protected except that one. If you trade too quickly, white will never get an advantage. 
So queen f3, and it does. Stockfish trades the pawn. How will Torch win this? Well, number one, there's an H pawn, right? That's what it's going to do. It's going to try to push this pawn, but it can't make any more progress. And at some point in the future, they're going to they're gonna have to trade. Every pawn is defended. Stockfish now sets up a fortress. It's a full defensive fortress. H5, knight f8. It loses the pawn. But everything else is protected. How is Torch going to break through? It trades its pawn. Stockfish would rather lose a pawn. What? Why did it take? I don't know. These bots understand something. I don't. And now, for the next 30 moves, Torch cannot find a win. It takes Torch until move 94 to consider a victory. We are on 52. 42 moves later. Stockfish saw the idea and Torch didn't. Torch proceeds to spend 40 moves not understanding how to win the position. Or it's just pl playing moves on purpose and trying to stall the clock. So Torch shuffles until the 90th move. It cannot find a way through. Black is a defensive fortress. Stockfish sees it though. Torch doesn't. The idea is so absurd. The idea to try to win is to bring the king and march the king over there. Why? Yeah, yeah. So we cross a hundred moves. Now it's winning. Wow. Now a friendly reminder, chess is solved with eight pieces on the board or less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's something called a table base, which is every possible position known to humans with eight pieces on the board or less. Is it a win? Is it a draw? These bots probably have access to it, but I'm not sure if they do. I'm not sure if they do. Queen c1, and now it's about hunting the king down. Now, what I'm about to show you is so ridiculous. So the only way to win, I swear to you, the only way to win is to lose the pawn. What? The only way to win is to lose this pawn. It's to give it away. Why? Because it opens lines to the king. Now, how does white win from here? What, but, but it's still a fortress. There is no way for the white king to attack the... You can't attack anything. This is how you win. I swear to you, you're not going to believe this. The only way to win this position is to lose the pawn. What? Yeah. You have to lose the pawn. Stop. Uh, there's got to be another way. No. If you allow the computer to shuffle indefinitely, it won't lose the pawn. There might be some way, right? Like, as a, at, at the end of the day, there's like a string of moves, maybe somewhere, but you can't. Because black will go here and here the rest of the game. You can give checks, and then you can, like, attack the knight, and the knight will go here. And there's just no way to win. Queen c8, knight e6. There's no way to win. King g7. So you have to lose the pawn. And now you have to get the king out of the corner. How? Like this. King g5. Knight, now you may wonder, why not like knight e6? Because I'm, now I'm actually threatening to take you. Knight f5. King f6. Knight e3. Right? Knight, knight e3. Queen c8. King g5. Knight f5. How am I going to get you out of the corner? Like that. Because now, if you had gone here, this is a tsukswang. And you can't move the knight because you lose this. You can't move this knight because this is mate. And you can't go king h8 because I play queen g5. And then queen g2. I play here, king h7, queen g2. If you play king h8, I give you a check. I play king h7, I play queen f8. Tsukswang. You cannot move a single piece without losing another piece. So you go here. Now I've hunted you out of the corner. Oh, now I'm winning. But I can't take your knight because you fork me. So now, the only way forward is to do the exact same thing. It's to force a Tsukswang. It's to force a position where black doesn't get the right defensive setup. I, an I analyzed this with table base. The drawing setup that was discovered many, many, many years ago is as follows. Let's say king f3, f4, king f4. The only way to draw this position, I'm just gonna do it very hypothetically, is something like this. This is a draw. If you can put the king to hang out with his knights and protect the invasion, it's a draw. But white doesn't let the knights get close. 
White spends the rest of the endgame hunting the Black King to the corner, disallowing the knights to, di to disengage from each other, and wins the game like this. It basically makes White Black run out of moves, and these knights can never line up together. If the knights line up together, it's a draw. So for example, in this position, let's say knight c6 is played to try to line up together. It's still winning. It's still winning because it's the wrong setup. It's still winning because it's the wrong setup. I mean, it's so ridiculous. And this game goes on 200 moves until slowly, methodically, Stockfish gets run to the corner and it ends up losing the game. I mean, it, it simply does not make sense. Like, it completely and totally does not make sense. This Stockfish doesn't even understand it until suddenly, look, suddenly it's like, oh, wait a minute, I've been losing the whole time. It doesn't understand. It was just saying it's a draw. It was just saying it's a draw. And yet now it's like, oh, I'm losing. Yep. Even if knight d4, it's going to lose the game. It's going to lose the game. See? It doesn't even get it. It takes 200 moves for the dance to go all around the board until finally one of the knights is going to get captured. And that's all she wrote. Because then you're going to lose the other one too. But uh, I don't even need it. <laughs> I don't even need it, but I will because I'm in check. 202 moves. This is one of the most unbelievable endgames I have ever seen. I was studying this like, this is aliens. This has got to be aliens playing chess. Like, White has to lose both pawns to win the endgame. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm done, bro. I... I'm going to go stare at a wall. <laughs> All right, you just, I got a plenty of other AI videos yeah, if you'd like. This one blew my mind. I can't even, I got low elo chest. We got whatever you want, all right? This channel is like a buffet. Now get out of here.